Hey, I'm Nicole, your host of the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. On this show, we're going to be talking tangible action that you can take in order to achieve the life you thought was only achievable after retirement. Everything you want now in life, you can have it. Will it take hard work, patience, and uncomfortable growth? You bet it will, but it will be so worth it. On this show, we will be deep diving into the topics of lifestyle design, travel, entrepreneurship, and everything in between. I myself am a global citizen and world traveler who left my home country and conventional lifestyle behind for a life of adventure and following my passions. And that's exactly what I want for you. It's your time to love your work, build your wealth, and create the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Let's do this. Welcome back to another episode of the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. This is our Digital Nomad Digest segment with myself and Cami. So today's topic is inspired by a new Netflix show that you have probably heard of or maybe watched, which is I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Zaiti, I think I'm hoping I'm saying his last name right. Um, But I have watched the whole series. I binged it in I think two or three evenings. And Cami has read a part of his book. So it really inspired us to talk today about what is a rich life? Because when I was watching this series specifically, I realized that what I wanted in my life looked so different from the couples and the people that were on his show. And I think as a digital nomad, it is, you have a very different idea of what a rich lifestyle looks like for you. And so I couldn't fully resonate, quite honestly, with any of the couples or the people that were on the show. And So it was funny, I was just telling Cammie, as soon as we watched the first episode, my partner and I, we paused it and we were like, okay, let's talk everything. What are our investments? How much money do we have in savings? What is our rich life? Which we are kind of already living our rich life for the most part, which is crazy and so amazing, but it really just gets you thinking a lot. And I think especially if you maybe are not on the path or living your rich life, or you haven't spoken about that with your partner, then this show is definitely something good to watch to get you thinking about that and get you maybe ready to have those conversations. So we're going to talk more in detail about rich lives for us as digital nomads and how that looks different from kind of the traditional American dream rich lifestyle, which I think is changing. Um, But Cammie, why don't you tell us kind of your thoughts on everything that I have just said and your rich lifestyle? Yeah, I love this topic because I actually got exposed to him and his book, I think, a couple years ago. Uh, maybe like three years ago, I think, before I even like took the leap to like buy myself, like the whole story of me buying a one way plane ticket to Portugal, following my intuition, blah, 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 blah. And, but I was already on this uh, journey of intuition. I was already kind of like had the lifestyle, had already lived in Bali. So I was already in my, you could say, digital nomad journey, but had to stop it because of COVID and everything. And I was already really connected to this idea of living by your intuition and living by alignment. So there is like this huge concept in spirituality, in personal development, whatever mindset growth, that is alignment. And I have this so deep inside of myself. It's like a core value that, that I live by is like, If I feel aligned with it, then I'll do it. If I don't feel aligned with it, I won't do it. Like to the smallest things such as like I need to get my reimbursement for the therapy that I have, like my insurance will reimburse me uh, like a part of it. I still haven't done it because I didn't feel like the alignment. I haven't felt the alignment to do it. And some people might call it procrastination, but I've seen in my life that when you are really, really connected to your intuition and to your alignment and to your inner self, you understand that the timing of things, they come in the right moment if you follow this alignment inside of yourself. And it will all make sense as to why I'm talking about about alignment in the first place. So it's like from the small thing to big things like sending my like sending an email to someone sending 
I don't know, like my portfolio or pitching something, you know, like whenever I feel this non-alignment of like, I don't feel like I should be sending my portfolio to this client, it normally doesn't work out, you know? So I was like, I don't even know why I freaking spent my energy on it. If like I already internally knew that I didn't feel aligned with it, you know? And then it goes to the work that you're doing as well. So like maybe you're in a, your job, either you have your own company, you're an entrepreneur, you're a freelance, or you're working for someone for a company and you don't feel aligned with the job that you're doing. Like we all know how this feels like. It feels like you have to put way more energy into doing something than actually just feeling aligned and feeling like it's flowing out of you you know I have this like little joke with a friend that I say that alignment and flow feels almost like you tripped and you're already in it you know so you don't you don't feel like there's a huge effort in the sense of draining your energy it has effort and it has action for you to take for you to be wherever you want to be in or like to do the job that you're doing or whatever but it just feels like your energy is intact or you're gaining energy from it, it doesn't feel like you're draining your energy and losing energy from it and the reason why I'm saying all of this is because I have been living by what is it that feels aligning and what is it that doesn't feel aligning in my life for a very long time and for me that is inherently connected to authentically and intuitive living because once you are connected to intuition once you are connected to your authentic self you will start um, creating scenarios in your life that feel authentic and aligned to your soul and they feel and, and you just start putting yourself and committing you make a commitment to yourself to put yourself in situations, jobs, relationships, whatever, like lifestyle that feels aligned to who you are. And I feel like this is for me what means to live your rich life. I feel like the rich life for me, when I saw Ramit explaining this, I really resonated with it because for me, it just was another way of explaining living through alignment, living through intuition, living through authenticity. So when you are really connected to that part of you that is authentic and that is you and not what society thinks you should be doing, then you are connected to your rich life, your authentically rich life. So it's not society's rich life. And this is what I love about his content is because he talks about the rich life for you and no one else. So one example that he gives that I love and I think it's so freeing, like this is something that I love about his content that I think it's so liberating, you know? You don't have to follow this mode. He's not about like following a mode or like following budgeting, for example, with scarcity. It's not about... Uh, saving money it's about how can I make more money you know and I love that mentality because it's really a mentality of abundance and in a spiritual level it's also the mentality of your soul your soul knows that the universe is abundant it knows that you are an abundant being so it would never restrict you so it would put you in an in aligned purchases to this to, in the sense of like it knows what is aligned or what is not to buy, you know, maybe at that time it's not aligning to buy the whatever, like the Ferrari, but it's aligned to buy the latte, you know, whatever. So it knows, you know that it's abundant inherently. So I love his content because it's very much about abundance, about you, yourself, your inner world, your authenticity, what you value in life. And I love this one example that he always gives that is about the latte. He's like, people here are, you know, thinking about how that they have to sp to uh, not spend like to save on three, okay, six dollar lattes or something like that when they should be um, worried about bigger things, you know, like not, you don't have to make the, don't ask yourself the six dollar question, ask yourself the six thousand dollar question, you know, and I love that because for me going out for us, I work from home, like I have, I'm a freelance, I work remotely, I'm a digital nomad, for me going out of my house to work from outside and drink a four euro latte is the most aligning 
thing that I could do in my day, not every day, but in some days, you know, because this makes me go outside. It makes me see people. It makes me feel like I'm doing something that is a self-care for myself. It changes my environment. It helps me be more productive. It helps my, um, my, my, just my overall well-being, you know, and I think that I wouldn't like to cut on a latte, but on the other hand, like, I couldn't care less about the car that I'm driving, you know? So, like, right now we have this car that is uh, smart and a friend of ours uh, lent it to us and it's, like, really falling apart. The car is falling apart. Sometimes, like, the rear gear won't work. (laughs) Sometimes it won't turn on. I don't give a shit, like, I don't care, because I don't care about the car, like, I really don't, I'd rather spend my money in lattes, like, I don't care, you know, it's a free car, I'll take it, and I, yeah, I just think, like, it's really interesting, and for me, I just also see it in, like, a spiritual way, and I try to just apply this concept of your rich life in everything that I do, you know, of course, it's, like, challenging, but it's, like, even, like, small things, like, I don't know, like, I really like a specific softener when I'm, like, washing my clothes, like, for me, a rich life is being able to get this softener that it, maybe it's more pricey, but I feel really, like, it feels really nice on my skin than buying the cheap ones, um, And I think it's about you really going inside of yourself and having this self-awareness and understanding what are your priorities, what is important to you. And yeah, I I love how in the beginning of this conversation, I thought I had nothing to say about this, but apparently I do have a lot. (laughs) But yeah, what are your thoughts on on my dissertation? (laughs) I love it that's what I love about just like going with the flow with podcasts it's like I don't think I have much to say oh no I I have a whole episode to say but (laughs) yeah I like that you brought that up because that was I had never thought about it in that particular way I think you know in some sense of what does your rich life look like and what do you buy and not buy to bring you joy and to make you happy in your rich life? I had never thought of it in that context, but him putting it in that like very easy digestible context, it really got me thinking, you know, like what the heck does my rich life look like? And it made me realize that when I was, you know, 21 years old, living in Canada, not like you said, not feeling aligned in Canada, not knowing that I didn't feel aligned, but just knowing like, I don't want to spend the rest of my life here. Um, And even that, you know, without me knowing was me figuring out what does my rich life look like and what does the rest of my life look like if I want to really enjoy my life and be happy and it wasn't what I was currently doing. Um, But I think, you know, I think the way that he has phrased this hopefully will wake some people up. And I mean, for others like myself, very feel very blessed to, to now say six years later, like, yes, I am living my rich life. And it's like a heck yes. But I feel like if it's not a heck yes for you and your life, or if it doesn't feel aligned, if you don't feel like what the goals you are striving towards now are really the goals that truly matter to you in the future, like saving for maybe a down payment on the home or the fancy car, which a lot of people want. You know, he even says, you know, the big two for expenses are cars and homes. And if that doesn't feel aligned with you, like it did for me, I was like, I don't ever want to own a home or have a mortgage. And if I do, I'm not going to live in it, you know, but that was kind of the dream that we were sold. And I realized that wasn't something that I wanted in my life. So I think that I hope that in him saying this and having this big platform, it will really get a lot of people to realize like what their rich life actually looks like. Um, but I'm curious for you. So you now, do you consciously think every single day, what does my rich life look like? Okay. It looks like splurging on the latte instead of, you know, getting a nice car or, or maybe like an Uber X every day or ha- buying that rent, or buying or renting that fancy car so that we can drive around Greece. Is that something that you are consciously asking yourself every day or is it something that is now just built into your subconscious? What I love about this is that I, I, I love how low-key spiritual his work can be as well because I feel like your rich life is not I don't know if he talks about this but for me my rich life is not set in stone 
So it's not because should they, my rich life decisions look like cer- something, look like a certain thing, they will look like the same thing tomorrow. So in this moment in time, like, like not even in this moment, in this day, today, for example, today my rich life looked like I went out to have my nails done because I like having my nails done once per month. However, when two years ago, I couldn't care less about my nails. I didn't want to have them done. And and that happened for like, I don't know, I was like four years not having my nails done and I couldn't care less and I didn't want to have them done, you know? But however, in this moment in time, I want to have them looking really nice, you know? So today I went out and got my nails done and I also was out. So I treated myself to a flat white in my favorite uh, coffee place. And I also bought like a little treat for myself. Um, And then I came back home and I don't know, later today I will also treat myself, quote unquote, to go to the gym like, cause I, cause I don't have a monthly membership. I just, cause I do something else. So I'll just like buy the one day pass, you know, like it's seven euros. So today my rich life looked like micro align, micro decisions that brought me alignment and brought me joy in that moment. However, tomorrow I'm not going to go have my nails done. I'm probably not going to go for a coffee because, you know, I have other plans and I try not to go for coffees every day because I'm also mindful, you know? Um, and I probably won't go to the gym. I will do something else, you know? And part of this is because I'm mindful of my money, but also if tomorrow I wake up and I'm craving a coffee, I will allow myself to go and have it because for me, it's about the inner alignment of it. It's about, it's more than a plan, you know? And I'm someone that I prefer to go with that feeling and that sensation than to actually... Um, have this like plan of what my rich life looks like oh my god I have to have a coffee three times per week otherwise I'm not following my rich life you know or something like that and or for example for the car like now we have this cheap falling apart that I'm really grateful for every time I sit in that car I hate it but at the same time I'm like I'm grateful for you because you are free (laughs) but just please go in reverse you know because it doesn't (laughs) work but anyways Uh, But now we have friends that are coming over. So I'm like, "Ah, maybe we should rent a car that has more than two seats, you know? So now it makes sense to rent a car because we have more people coming and then there won't, it won't make sense anymore. So we will stop renting the car, you know? And then um, right now I'm in an apartment that I particularly don't like that much but um, it's cheap and I'm living in one month, you know? So for me right now, I don't care about it, you know? I'd rather spend money in something else or save more money or whatever. However, when you're in another country, like when I'm living in Paris, I know it will be more expensive and maybe it will be important for me to rent an apartment that it's bigger because I need that time for myself and I need to give me need to give myself that space. So I will invest my money in a more expensive apartment, you know? So it's not because I rented a cheap apartment in Greece, quote unquote, because at that moment in my life, it was okay because my priorities were somewhere else that in three months, I also have to save up in an apartment because this didn't make sense to me before, you know? So I think that... To answer your question, I feel like it's something that I'm more connected to in the present moment, into my awareness and into my inner alignment, and then making the decisions and the purchases when it comes to money um, in regards to the present moment, in regards to how I feel. If I don't feel good about something, if I feel like... Um, it feels too much or, you know, it feels like this is a too big of an expense or something like that, I will, you know, take myself a little bit inwards. I will understand if this is a limiting belief or if it's something that really it's too much and maybe I should hold on a little bit right now and how can I make this work in the future. So I try to be really mindful about it. I'm not perfect at all. You know, sometimes I have a lot of lack mentality in regards to money, like not wanting to spend it at all. And sometimes I spend a lot without being aware of it, you know? So of course I'm not perfect, but I try to come back to myself and come back to this alignment. And in saying that, I also think that there's like, in 
besides these micro decisions and these micro moments of an everyday life, I think that there's something that is deeper and bigger, which is what do you value in your life? And then we talk about this when we talk about like lifestyle design or authentic living or something like that, in which is I value my rich life looks like freedom and flexibility. So how can I build a structure that supports that and that I have the financial abundance that will support whatever my values in life really are. So, and like living close to nature or whatever, you know? So I think that there are le several layers to it and also like the micro and the macro and how they support and interconnect with each other. That's so interesting. I love that we're talking about rich life in combination with alignment. And I would say, I'm sure you probably agree. I think between us, I am much more like the analytical. And I think you are much more the heart centered, um, spiritual. I don't know if that would be the right word. So I'm curious because that is how you approach life. And it's totally not how I do. I'm curious, how do you plan for the future long term? Let's say the next one, five, 10, 30 years, um, living in this alignment and doing what feels right for you in the moment. Is there a strategy behind that? Or is it just kind of like, I'm going to see where I end up? Or what does that look like for you? Yeah, that's a great question because I don't really plan. <laughs> Um, like what I really learned from my family is like, I really learned how to save money. Like this is something also because like we are Jewish and my family, <laughs> I love how, because we are Jewish period, you know, um, uh, my side, like my dad's side of the family, we were, they were in Egypt and they were living there, but they weren't they were born in Egypt and everything, but they are not considered Egyptian. They were considered like Europeans living in Egypt. And they were expelled when Nasser took control of Egypt. Everyone that was not Egyptian and including Jewish people, they were expelled. So my grandparents, they lost everything that they had. Like they, everything that they had in the bank, their bank accounts were fro was frozen. So if you went out, like if you received a lot of money in it in on a Saturday, on a Sunday, it was completely frozen and you couldn't like touch that money anymore. You could only live with whatever you had. So in a period of one month, they had to sell their apartment. They had, they were like newly wed, about to go to their honeymoon. And, um, the, like life said, fuck that, you won't be going to your honeymoon, sorry, you're going to leave the place that was once your home, they had to leave their, they had to sell their house, take everyone in the family and take a ship to Brazil, because it was the only country that was accepting people that um, didn't have a nationality, and there was this one guy, like, that was, I think my, like, the, um, the brother of my grandmother I don't know he didn't have a passport he didn't have a nationality and the only country that was accepting a person like that was Brazil so they went to Brazil took a ship like can you imagine like going from one country because you're being expelled with I don't know I think they had like 500 dollars for like the inf entire family you know so barely nothing getting to a country that you don't know the language, you don't know anything, the first day they slept in a, in the middle of the streets, you know, because they didn't know where to stay, what to do or anything. So that made my family, I'm telling this whole story because that made my this part of my family to grow up and normally that's like a big thing in the Jewish community as well. You grow up with this idea that um, like invest in things that you can't lose, invest in education, in knowledge, in experiences, in traveling, blah, blah, blah. Don't invest in material things because these things can be taken away from you. But the other things that are experiences or learnings or whatever, they can't be taken away from you. So invest in things that, that, that can't be taken away from you. However, there's another thing that I grew up with a lot, which was um, put the most money aside that you can. And I think that there is a really good thing to this however I think that I can do it in a pretty unaligned way and I'm like outing myself you know talking about alignment but I'm a human I'm not perfect so what I do is that I try to like put aside the most like to save the most money that I can and right now I'm starting to learn more about investments because I want to be able to do something with this money 
uh, but I'm also hyper aware that my priority right now in the age that I'm in is not to think about what's going to happen in five years. So I'm more worried about, I'm more, not worried the word, I'm more aware and I'm more, um, I want to be more present with the now and figure out myself and how I want to work in a way that is sustainable than to put my mindset in the future. Maybe that's really poor advice. <laughs> and I'm not advising anything to anyone to do anything. I'm just explaining like how I am working in this moment right now. Also because I'm still figuring out a lot of different things. So I'm making sure that I'm feeling my mind is feeling safe by having money saved and by saving money the, all that I can every month but I don't want to compromise my alignment in doing so and if it it is fun and alignment and joyful for me to have a flat white every week or whatever how much the, how does that look like I will have it but I'm also hyper mindful of that as well so it's a balance and I don't know I just have this like big trust that I will find the right investments and the right direction to this money when I'm supposed to find it. I know that this sounds completely woo-woo and crazy, maybe for someone who's like hyper um, logical, but I don't know, that's just the trust that I have. And then ultimately in a more even like disconnected way, I just also think that this is all like just a dream and a matrix. So what even is money and the future? <laughs> so I'm really also interested about how like first how your rich like rich life looks like and how you make your decisions because you come from a logical place and also how you you are way more plenty probably. So I would love for you to answer the same questions as me so we can have the separation. Yeah, so I appreciate you sharing all of that. I think it's very interesting for me to hear that because we come from two very different perspectives of things, which is why I think, you know, it's very interesting to hear both of our sides of things. Um, but I first of all, I really like invest in things you can't lose. Of course, I think it's important to have savings and, you know, know potentially where those savings are going to go for you in the future and build up to something. But I also think it is very important to invest in things you can't lose from a financial, again, analytical perspective. Um, there has been so much happening, even in the last six months, less even if you want to go on a more, on a smaller scale. But um, yeah, you know, there has been so many things happening with um, almost like Ponzi schemes in the crypto space, the bank runs that have been happening with the two bank collapses. So, you know, even if your money is safe, I'm doing air quotes, like safe, is it really safe in a bank? I believe no. I think that we have seen that a lot over the past few years in Canada. I know there was the protest during COVID and then anyone who was involved in the protest got their bank accounts frozen. Um, for me, that's not very autonomous of my own money. So that's kind of like a whole nother topic we can dive into. That is a world that I find very interesting. You know, it's, it's very interesting for me, the perspective of put your money in things that you can't lose. Um, you know, even banks, investments, anything, financial advisors, you know, anything like that, it, it can be lost. So I think to invest in yourself, like you said, your education, your education as a business owner and an entrepreneur um, is something having myself gone through the traditional education system, I find so much more valuable than my four-year university degree, but that's just me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I completely do agree with that. But your question to me was, what does my rich life look like? And do I plan for the future? What does that look like? And I think it's almost a yes and no, do I plan for the future? Because I think similar to you and similar to many global citizens, digital nomads, I don't have one set way of what I want my life to look like in two years, five years, 10 years, 50 years, whatever. Okay, maybe 50 years might be a bit ambitious. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And I think that a lot of us don't want to have that super long-term plan. And that's why I left Canada, because I knew what my life looked like there. And I didn't want that. And so I wanted something that was a bit more unpredictable. But at the same time, with that being said, on the flip side, I also do 
want to have enough investments, enough money, and somewhat of a plan to know the direction of what my life is somewhat going to look like. And then, of course, there is a bunch of leeway and really freedom to be able to do whatever I want within that. But so, for example, in my life right now, like I know for the next, uh, not a year, probably like six to eight months, I know the continent that we'll be in, which is for specific purposes of a procedure that I'm going through. I have to be in a certain country. So I kind of have to be in a certain part of the world. And so that is, I guess, a short to medium term plan. Um, For some people, it would be very short for six to eight months. But for me, that's kind of short to medium. And then from there, it looks like traveling and going to different parts of the world. And, you know, in the future, I would love to buy a few different investment properties I've started looking into a little bit more. And um, so I kind of have a very loose plan of what I want my life to look like. I know where I want my residencies and my citizenships. I don't know if I'm going to settle down somewhere or where I'm going to live, but I know kind of an idea of where I would want to have some investment properties, where the market is good. So it's kind of a yes and no. I know parts of it, but the big kind of grand scheme is kind of something that I like to just leave up to serendipity and whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And Because I live this lifestyle, I want the flexibility. I'm sure like you too, I want the flexibility. If I want to go to Paris next week and drop everything, like, okay, I I technically can do that if I really want to. Is it going to be a lot of logistical planning? Yes. But like, I want that freedom lifestyle. And I think that's what a lot of digital nomads want. Um, So then that's kind of what my plan looks like. But my rich life really looks like being able to live that life, being able to have that freedom, being able to, you know, invest in different markets. And right now I'm optimizing my taxes, being able to not live in my home country and have different countries at my disposal where I can optimize my taxes for myself, for my business. So that's really what my personal rich life looks like. My per- my rich life also looks like probably not ever living in a Western country ever again. Uh, It's not really something I resonate with. Visiting, yes, but living there, probably not. Um, You know, right now we're in this beautiful place in the countryside of Paraguay, three bedrooms, outdoor barbecue, pool, really beautiful and modern. And like, how great, like it's just, and the price is also insane. And like, I never thought that I would be here. And this is like rich lifetimes 1000. I'm sure also you living in Greece, um, like you never thought you would be there. That's such a rich life moment. Also, you know, I know we were talking about cooking a little bit as well and how that's something that's very important to you. For me, it looks like having a cleaner and a cook who comes in and who does the dishes and who does some cleaning and who cooks because I don't like cooking. I don't love grocery shopping. That to me is honestly a waste of time when I could be using that time to be doing something better, whether it is reading a book, working on my business, working with clients, or even just resting and relaxing, which then recharges myself and recharges my brain so that I don't get burnt out. And I put all of those things before um, being in the kitchen, but that's just me. And so for me, that would be an amazing expense that would free up my life and so much of my time. Um, But Yeah. I mean, there's so many unknowns, you know, if I will ever buy a house in one country and maybe live there for half the year, if I will even have kids. And that's probably a whole nother topic we can talk about. You know, there's so many variables and unknowns and that's part of what my rich life looks like. Yeah. And I think that, I don't know, like this is my deep belief. I think that if you follow your alignment every day and One thing that I really want to say is that alignment comes from the soulful, the intuitive part of you. It doesn't come from the mind. So alignment doesn't look like binge shopping, like compulsion, you know, like shopping compulsion. Alignment doesn't look like that because that is addiction and addiction lives in the mind. It lives in the ego, in a distorted ego, a distorted mind, you know, so that is not alignment. And that is, I think, when a lot of people hear like, oh, so alignment is I'm just gonna buy whatever I want, because, you know, this was what feels aligned and joyful for me. Yeah, but 
you know, it, it's, it's not supposed to come from your mind. It's supposed to come from your heart. So, um, from your soul, from this inner guidance space inside of yourself. And when you follow this breadcrumbs of alignment every day, every single moment, every single present second, you will, um, obviously it will fall, everything falls into place in regards to the future. So if you feel like it's aligning to reach out to a bank and ask about something, you know, I don't know. And then you will see that in five years, you understand why it was this specific bank, you know, or something like that. I believe that if you follow this uh, inner alignment, things will lead you to wherever they need to be led, you know, also because I think that with COVID and 2020 and blah, 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 I think we all can agree that we have way less control over things than we really think that we have. And I think that that's a little bit of the reason why I don't really plan that much and why my focus is more on the now and on the alignment of now, which doesn't mean that I am reckless, quote unquote, with whatever, like my money and my things and my life. But my awareness is more on the now than in like five years from now, because five years ago, when I was 24, I was in a long-term relationship, which I thought I would marry the guy. I thought that by 29, I wanted to be living in a home in London, in the UK with my ex-boyfriend. And I wanted, I remember <laughs> wanting to be a young pregnant woman. So I wanted to be pregnant before 29 because I wanted my body to be really nice at the ages 30 and 31. Like that was my dream. And I wanted to have this big corporate job on a fashion magazine um, in London. And I wanted to... That's what my life... That's what I, I had as a plan when I was 24 years old. So five years ago, that was what I imagined that my dream was. Today, if you put me in this life, I would kill someone. Because like I wouldn't be able to, to stand it because... I don't want to be with my ex-boyfriend, clearly, because I'm not with him anymore. Um, I don't want to be pregnant. Like, please don't put a baby in my belly. I don't want to necessarily be married now. Um, I don't want to be living in London because I don't like the climate of it. I love London and I love staying there for like short amount of time. But if I lived there, I would get depressed probably because of how gray it is. And I don't want to leave a corporate in a, like, I don't want to have a job in a fashion magazine. So none of the, the only thing about that life that I have now and that I would still want is like the, the freedom to be traveling, you know, like, or living somewhere else that is on my home country. Like, that's the only thing that I still want about that dream that I had when I was 24 years old. So I am now 29 in five years from now, I will be an age that I would have to count right now. 30 something, three, four, 34, right? I think. Yeah. 34. Yeah. So I would be, I will be 34. Like I can imagine whatever I want and I can imagine what would be my rich, what I would like my rich life to look like in five years. But so many things can change in this period. And maybe the rich life that I had envisioned for myself in this moment won't be the same as I will want in five years from now. So why am I going to waste my time thinking about the five years if I can put my awareness in the now and making sure that my now is the best and most aligned that it can be and the richest and most abundant that it can be and, I, and trusting that whatever decisions I make from this place, they will then create the rich life, however that looks like for me, in five years from now. So this is what I mean about also like having this awareness in the now. And I am far from being perfect. You know, I still find myself in so much conditioning. I still find myself in so many traps of the mind. And uh, I still find myself like skating, you know, like I have this vision of, of like sometimes, you know, when you're like just ice skating and you feel like you're like on the same place, you know, you're not moving, you're kind of feeling like you're in a rut. I still feel like I'm that, like, like I'm like that. But I would rather put 
energy and time and awareness into why do I feel like I'm in a rut and how can I change this and create a better now for myself then okay where do I want to be in five years like I don't fuck I, and I don't care like I don't care because I know that once I had a dream that I would have not wanted to live so I don't know what myself in five years will want so like it's I, I think that of course we can imagine and prepare for certain things and make sure that we're feeling safe and everything but I think that humans they live a lot in the future and in the past and not that much in the present and they forget that the present is all there is and we just forget to live in it and to put energy into it yeah, I love that. I love that you mentioned that, and especially at the end about the present. And to kind of wrap, start wrapping up, I think it's so interesting hearing your perspective on it, because for me, when you talk about like the feeling of alignment, I'm like, I don't think I've ever felt that before, because I'm very, you know, head centered. That's just always how I've been. And so I love that you bring that up and that you mention that. But in you saying that, I also think, you know, although I've never stopped and asked myself, do I feel aligned in this? I don't know like how that would feel or where that would come from or how long I'd be waiting for an answer. You know, like I don't know what that would look like for me, but I do think that it has happened when I look back in the past um, because like you said, your example of, you know, at 29, you wanting to live in London and have this family and be a young mom. I kind of had that at 21 when I was thinking, okay, like I don't want to be here. And so that was me being very aligned, but not even realizing it and being aligned with, okay, I need to create a different future for myself, a different present for myself, because where I am right now is not at all what I'm aligned with. But if you would have told me at the time, like, oh, you're not aligned with what you're doing now, I would have been like, I don't know what the heck that feels like. Like, I just know I need to leave. So I think, you know, alignment does come differently and feel differently for everyone and I love that it sounds like you are can feel it very passionately and like you can sit in it and kind of know a direction or feel some type of guidance whereas for me it's just kind of like is this right for me right now and if the answer is no then I know I need to change it because nobody else is going to change it for me like nobody else cares enough to change it for me and so I have to be the one to make that change um but yeah, I, I really think that it's important. And you know, I think planning really does only go so far. Of course, I have this somewhat vision of what I want my life to look like in the future. But at the same time, I remember when I was like 17, 18, I was like, when I'm 23, I'm going to be married. I want to have three kids. 23 is too old. Like, I need to be married by the time if I'm not married at 23, like, I'm just so old. And like, now I'm 29. And it's just like, yeah, no, I still don't want any of that. And it's years later. So I think, um, yeah, the planning really does only go so far, especially in this lifestyle. But I think really in any lifestyle, and I think, you know, the typical lifestyle, the American dream, like you have your whole life planned out for you. And then you kind of have to start thinking, is is this really the life that I want for myself? Um, yeah, so I, th I think, you know, it's very interesting to talk about alignment in the context of living your rich life like we are today because they really do go so hand in hand yeah i do think i do agree with you that alignment feels different for everyone and and i think that one of the reasons why it's so challenging to talk about it and explain it is because it's it feels different and i think that for some people that are listening right now maybe they're like i don't even know what a, what brings me alignment you know even if I am seeking alignment in my day-to-day -day, I don't even know what it is what I would and I've been there so I understand them and I want to say that if you are someone who who is listening to this and you're like I don't even know what brings me alignment like I want to create more alignment and I want to feel this blah 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 start by seeing what doesn't bring you alignment like you said so what is it that doesn't feel good like we all know if you are willing to be honest with yourself you know what is not bringing alignment to your life and what is bringing maybe alignment maybe neutrality or maybe joy you know but you know what's not so if you're willing to be honest with yourself and you go inside of your 
awareness, wherever that is for yourself, for me, it's more in the body, you are able to understand what is not aligning for you. And I think that from that, you start having more clarity of like, actually, when I go out to have a coffee, it really brings me joy. I watch the birds and the wings and the leaves and it brings me kind of like this certain feeling of happiness or when I go for a walk in the morning it brings me happiness like those small things that we humans in the mind we tend to undermine or underestimate or create like ah it's just a walk it's just a coffee no like it's part of the human experience and it can bring you a lot of joy and it's interesting that you're saying that because there was one time that I saw a post and I don't I think that you are maybe putting alignment in another thing because I've seen you experience alignment like I remember that you posted this thing about um like I think it was the f- a photo like it was on your stories I think it was a photo of an ice cream I don't know remember and on top of it you wrote I'm feeling so grateful about the the life that I have like the day today was so amazing I just wish that everyone could feel the same do you remember that 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 thing that you wrote is alignment it's like in that moment that you bought that i i don't know if it was an ice cream i don't know why I had it was it was like a head. box of like this delicious chocolate cake and i was so happy perfect yeah. perfect that moment of like extreme happiness and feeling grateful for your life for your day for that piece of cake that is alignment you know so it is something that i think you experience every day from my conversations with you you experience this constantly but maybe you just don't have the word for it and you don't need the word for it you know but you just know that however you're leading your life brings you joy and brings you gratitude and that is alignment you know that is the feeling of of like you just feel like you're on the right place at the right time on the right whatever you know and sometimes for the other people listening it doesn't feel like that necessarily like you're drinking your coffee you're feeling a little bit better than feeling like shit that is a little alignment maybe you're not feeling like everything is right in the world but you're feeling a little bit better you're feeling a little bit closer to your soul to your authentic self to your to the way that you feel like you should be living that is alignment you know and you have experienced that it's just maybe maybe you're thinking that it's this grand thing of like channeling something but it's not it's just like yeah. feeling happy you know it's so interesting that you bring that up we're gonna wrap up because my laptop is going to die um but <laughs> it's so interesting that you say that because, and it's funny that you said, you know, you feel it in the body. And I'm like, heck no, like, I don't know what that feels like. But I think for me in you saying like, whether it looks like going for a walk or going for a coffee, like there are, th- and I feel like I experience it through doing things. Like I love going for a little afternoon walk with my partner. We like talk business. We just kind of look at the scenery wherever we are in the world, whether it's a city or nature, it doesn't matter. But like, I feel like in you saying that, that is what feels aligned to me. And that's what I enjoy doing. And that's what I seek out whenever possible. And so I think for me, it's really from experiences. And also just feelings. I don't know if that's how you feel it in the body. But I remember posting it wasn't that long ago, me eating this like leftover chocolate cake. And we had a great night with like making dinner with friends the night before. And then I was just on the balcony. And I was like, I freaking want this life for everyone. But I was like, no, I want the life for everybody that they want. Maybe it doesn't look like this life, but whatever life they actually want and they have chosen for themselves, not just a life that they've kind of gone through the motions, that's the life that I want for them. And yeah, I think if, if that was alignment, like I felt so aligned in that moment. But I think it's interesting because it sounds like we do experience alignment very differently and so I like that now I'm a little bit more aware of it and can realize like okay now I'm aligned and maybe doing this I'm not so aligned but I also think in what I talk about on my social media travel finance like I just love that so much and I feel so aligned in that and you know every day I have to make a new piece of content and I'm like yeah it's no problem like it's so easy for me to just make a new piece of content because there's so many things that I want to share and talk about and that I want to dive into that I want to share with other people. So yeah, it's, I think there's alignment in so many ways, whether it's like business or your personal life or whatever that looks like for you. 
Yeah, exactly. And then there is also, I love this topic. I honestly, I have like several episodes on my podcast about alignment and everything. But one last thing that I want to say is that once you connect, like when once you commit to alignment yeah. and you really bring like bring that as and you really put set out this intention, like I want to create alignment every day, every second, blah, blah, blah. Not again, not saying that my life is perfect, everything is magical, blah, blah, blah. However, when you put that, you set out this intention, you end up creating this movement and this flow in your day to day in which you can see the like little synchronicities that make you feel aligned so today for example like I woke up I was feeling aligned I ate and I was feeling aligned I left my home with my little car to do my to have my nails done and I thought to myself like oh, I would really like to have like this pearl manicure today because I was seeing it on social media but I was like yeah but I don't think they have pearl and I was also thinking like I think today will be an easy day to park here in Hanya and here it's crazy to park like it's really hard and then I went out and I found a parking spot like really quick it was never so quick I got to the place they had a pearl manicure manicure like I went to the co to my favorite coffee shop ever. like everything was in alignment of course like like in the end of it I got a parking ticket so not not as a line <laughs> lining but it was only 10 euros so it's fine but you can see like in your day-to-day -day how things kind of like piece out together and make like an aligned flow that also are like symbolisms of your alignment you know so yeah yeah I love alignment I really really love it mm. <laughs> so interesting I love how we started with rich life and then it goes into alignment <laughs> and how they pair together like it's so interesting and I love talking to you about these topics because this is so your area you know last week's episode about finances dividend investing like that's me but it's really interesting to learn from each other and to grow on this podcast and hopefully everyone listening to grow as well and maybe you feel alignment differently than both of us but now you can be conscious and aware of it um so I hope this episode brought you something I, I know it did for me <laughs> So thank you, Cami. I, uh, I really appreciate, as always, our talks, our conversations as two different perspectives of digital nomads. I love it. I always love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast, our Digital Nomad Digest segment. Check out all of our links below for social media, for Cami's podcast, for my website and blog. Everything is linked below and we will see you next Friday. If this episode has served you in any way, I would be grateful if you share your takeaways or what you have learned from this episode by tagging me on Instagram at nomadneeks. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast platform and leave a five-star review. This helps me to continue creating inspiring and educational content for you in the future. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast.